how you doing? Uh, Coach Anthony here with Behind the Gloves. Uh, great fight tonight. Um, you fought a very good fight. You had you had your moments in the fight. Um, did Deontay Wilder's power surprise you? Were you guys? I mean, obviously you guys knew about the power coming in, but as an experienced boxer like yourself, are, are you surprised with you know the power? Entrando la pelea sabía que él daba duro. Está sorprendido. Da más duro lo que tú pensabas. Sí, un boxeo que es un boxeo pegador. Pero bueno, estaba preparado para lo que para lo que viniera. He says, yeah, he knew he hits hard. He knew that walking into the fight and Wilder proved it today. And also, uh, do you feel like they should have stopped the round, the fight in that round where you had him hurt? And um, were you upset that they gave him that extra time in the corner uh, considering that he seemed rally hurt? Even when he came out of that eighth round, his legs looked very wobbly. Are you upset that they didn't stop the fight? Or are you OK with that judgment call by, by the referee and the doctors? <laughs> Tú pensabas que tenían que haber parado la pelea ahí. Y si pensabas que después que salió en el 8, que le dieron tiempo de nuevo para recuperarse, si pensabas que eso estaba claro. bien. No, pero bueno, el destino es el destino. ¿Qué vamos a hacer? Él dice, es it's boxing. Y uh, it's destiny, es destiny, es his night tonight. ¿Ni otras preguntas? Yeah, Luis, um, how would you uh, rate Deontay Water comparing him to all the other heavyweights now that you've been in the ring with him? Comparado a todos los heavyweights que tú has usado, ¿cómo tú opinas de él entre todos los que has usado y toda la gente que hay afuera? Nah, en un poquito se ha ganado el puesto de ser campeón. De luchar también como yo. He says little by little, like he's done for his daughter, he's won his place, and he's one of the best he's ever fought. He's proved it tonight. Him versus Joshua, who's going to win that fight? Entre Water y Joshua, ¿quién gana la pelea? Todo puede pasar. So anything can happen, uh, two big punchers. Like I got <laughs> Luis, it looked like uh, after you hurt Wilder, um, you threw all those punches, and then you were a little bit gassed out, just a little bit tired, and that gave uh, Deontay some time to recover. Did you want to throw more punches during some of those you know, middle rounds, but you just didn't necessarily have the energy at the time? <laughs> Tiraste tanto puñazo que lo tenías ahí. ¿Tú crees que eso fue una de las razones que después bajaste un poco de poder tirar tanto puñazo y por eso se puso la pelea como se puso? No, todo boxeo. Yo estaba, yo vine preparado para 12, 13 asaltos, lo que hubiera. Eh, un golpe de sitio cualquier pelea. Hay He muchos said, vienen que no. no pff, yeah. He said um, he came ready to do 12, 13, 14 rounds, uh, but a one punch power that clips you when you're heavy, well, you can't do nothing about it. Any other questions? Just because we're, we're pressed to go as little girls have to go. They got to catch a 10 o'clock uh, in the morning flight. Luis, uh, congratulations on the spirited effort tonight. I think everyone in the arena was impressed with you. Uh, so question is, uh, do you want an immediate rematch, and do you think uh, Deontay will give you one? Todo mundo está bien impresionado con hoy el boxeo que hiciste hoy. Eh, tú quieres pelear de nuevo rápido con Wilder y si tú crees que él te lo diera. Bueno, <coughs> si, si, si de verdad tuviera aquí, piensa que me merezco la decisión de usted. He says, yeah, he wants it and he thinks he deserves it, um, but it's up to Wilder. It was a great fight. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, guys. We have, we have to catch a. He has to catch a flight at 10 in the morning. Thank you. Morning. Ba ahead, thank you, ahead. Luis. We'll let him go ahead. Gotcha. Let him. He won't. Hold on, Luis. Go ahead. Ask him. Right. I just want to see for him. Does he feel he could have finished off Wilder in those two rounds? Did he have another fight? The eighth round. Do you think that if he had been a little bit more, now that he's seen the fight, he could have taken him out there in the seventh and the eighth, or he could have taken him out of the way. Do you think? No, I'm doing my job. I'm doing my job. Con una persona como Wilder uno no puede ir a, 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 a lo loco porque tú no sabes con qué te va a tirar. He says he came to do his job and the problem is he could have done more, <coughs> but with a person like Wilder you can't just go crazy. And he thinks that's what happened and he just got too comfortable. Yeah, he got too comfortable and he just didn't respect him and he got caught with a punch. Pero sí me gustaría una revancha. But yeah, he would like a rematch if the public wants it. He wants it. Yeah, go to Wilder. Yeah, no. Hold on, he wants it.
say something for one. Yeah. No, no por gusto el hombre se ha mantenido ahí, ha luchado por su hija. Eh, mi hija también tiene su, su problema y que Dios bendiga a su hija y que siga adelante. He says, eh, Wilder hasn't got there for nothing. Uh, he knows he has a sick little girl too. And he wants the best for him and God bless him and his family. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. How you guys doing? Thank you for waiting um, so long for me. I know y'all guys ready to go home. But tonight was a magical night. Um, I knew I was in for a fight. Luis Ortiz is the most technical fighter in the division. We already knew that with the Cuban background. And, um, you know, when guys come and fight me, we know they're going to bring their best. We know they do things that we never seen them do. Look at this man. He was running. He was doing things that we never seen him do. But when you finna fight the king of the division, you better get yourself prepared. You better get yourself mentally ready because I got a heart of a lion, man. And that's just what it is, you know. I tell people all the time, I'd rather be the part than look the part. And I showed that tonight. It's not about weight. It's not how big a person is. It's not about all of different things that people, you know, get so wrapped up in their mind about boxing. You know, boxing is a beautiful sport. It's a sweet science to this. And it's all about who got the bigger heart. And tonight I showed I had the bigger heart. And um, I solidified myself at the top as the baddest man on the planet, you know. <laughs> and, um, you know, like I've always said, my goal is my mission is to unify the division. As you can see, I'm not afraid to, to, to risk myself for small rewards with bigger risk because I, I want to prove to the world that I am the best. That's my ultimate goal, to prove to the world I am the best. You know, people got this thing so wrapped up. They didn't got so wrapped up into who making the most money, who got the most followers, who doing this. And, you know, it ain't about that to me. It's about me proving who's the best. And America got a, a killer huh, on their side, and I'm ready to put up my title with uh, until anybody in the world that's ready for me, you know, I feel once I beat Luis Ortiz, it, you know, it ain't nobody else with the skill set that's going to be able to beat me. Any questions? Yes, sir. Uh, Deontay, Chris Maddox with Yahoo. Um, to your left. The, after the seventh round, when you went back to the corner, what were you thinking? That was probably as deep as you've ever been uh, with an opponent. Yeah, um, I was just thinking, you know, I really wasn't thinking nothing, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> I really wasn't thinking nothing, to be honest. You know, I knew that once I got out of that, that whirlwind that he was, he had me in. You know, he had me in a whirlwind, and um, I had to get up out of there because he throw nice combinations. And, um, you know, I think when he, when he put guys in that whirlwind, they give up. Their heart started to play in, and it started to become a mental thing. And I always tell people, if you speak it, believe it, receive it, then you shall do that. And I speak things like I speak it because I want to be a living witness. It's nothing like showing people and then they believe it. Because a lot of people always say, I have to believe it. I have to see it to believe it. If that's the case, then I show people each and every time that I'm going to show you, then you believe in it, you know. And, you know, I can't, I can't be saying things and don't show it. You know, that's my biggest thing. I want to show people, all you got to do is believe in yourself. No matter where you are, no matter who the opponent is, no matter who it is. It don't even have to be boxing. It can be just this, what you're doing. Like, just being, you know, you can have a regular job. You always want to be the best. You know, my first job was working at Burger King. And the thing about it, although it was a low paying job, but I made sure I was the best, the best worker there. Anything I do, I want to be the best at what I do. And I, I show it each and every time in the ring. So now I am 40 and over, 39 KOs. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> did, you, did you pay your second win? Well, I was never tired. I wasn't never tired, you know. Um, I was uh, pacing myself. Um, I don't make excuses. You know, I could have made excuses. I, I caught a cold um, in, in camp and stuff like that. That's why I lost so much weight. But I didn't want to make excuses. I didn't want to, you know, I feel when people make excuses early on, they already looking for a way out. So when they lose, it's, oh, you know, he was, he was, he had, he was sick and stuff. I didn't want to do that, you know. And uh, I just showed that I had the heart. 
uh, Deontay Aaron Suttle, Tuscaloosa News. Are you going to call out Anthony Joshua? Do you want him next? Uh, how many times do I have to call him out? <laughs> I mean, how many times? They hide him, you know. You know, his promoter don't want that fight. And after tonight, they definitely ain't going to want it. But it's going to be up to you guys. It's going to be up to the fans. I've done enough. I've spoken enough. I really don't even want to talk about the dude no more because I've said all I had to say. And after tonight, I don't need to say no more. All I want to do is prove to the world that I am the best. I'm the baddest man on the planet. And hey, whenever they ready, we'll be ready. They talking about calling them. How many times we got to call them? All you got to do is pick up the phone. Deontay, congratulations on the big win. Uh, speak it, believe it, receive it. Something you said before the fight, something you said after the fight. Uh, in the seventh round, when you're in trouble, how important was that belief to your victory? Oh, it's, it was very important. It's just like I said before, I, I can't be speaking things and not follow what I say, you know? Then I'd be contradicting myself. And then how, how could people believe in anything that I put out there if I don't, if, if I don't do it, what I, you know, if I don't follow behind what I say, you know, I want people to be able to empower their minds. I want people to be able to have confidence in themselves. You don't need a room full of people to believe in you. All you need is your, yourself. All you need is yourself. You don't have to have a lot of people, you know, because most of the time people will let you down. Human will let you down, you know, especially when you have family or friends or whatever. Most people, most people are happy for you until you get to a certain point in your life or when you get, or when you start doing better than them. And then that's when that support, that's when that hate start to come in. But if you believe in yourself, you ain't got to worry about that, you know. You'll, know, you'll tell the difference between who's for you and who, who, who's not. And that's when you can take that leap of faith and say, you know what, I know you ain't for me, you know, and, and you just go forward with that, you know. We, we too worry about what people may think of us. We too worry about what people may, may say about us. You know, it's not about that. I always say if you took six months to worry about, you, st you took six months to worry about yourself and six months to stay out of other folks' business, shit, a whole year that went by, you done focused on yourself. Look how far you can make it. And quick follow-up. Last fight, 50 Cent walked you to the ring. This time, Lil' Ken, how did you and the Queen B get in contact for that to happen? Well, you know, um, again, <laughs> my brother, my brother Manu Jones, man, you know. Everybody called my brother. Now, that's how I build a relationship with these other people, you know, um, which was a beautiful thing because every, I, th I feel everything I do now is going to make history, you know, and I, I made history with her tonight because it's never, never been a fighter to bring a female out. And I think she did a great job for what she did. And um, it's going to be many more. Everybody want to do the walkout and stuff. You know, I, I'm really not interested in people walking out and stuff like that, but I do believe in giving the opportunity. I do believe in, you know, letting people be happy and, and do what they want to do. If that makes them happy, then, you know, I, you know, I suck certain things up and say, what's up? Let's make it happen. Because I can just ease. I don't even have to come out to no music, you know what I mean, at all. Because I'd be so into the zone. I'd be so focused. You know, man, it's, it'd be a different person. Right now, I feel, I feel calm right now. Before, I was the bronze bummer. You know, now I'm Deontay Wilder. I can relax. I can laugh. I can be silly. And I can just live my life. I'm going to go home and lock myself in the house with, amongst my children and let them love all over me. Deontay, uh, Keith Eidick from BoxingScene.com. Do you think all of what happened tonight will make Anthony Joshua want to fight you more or less? I'll let you be the judge of that. I mean, even before I fought Luis Ortiz, it wasn't nobody. I wasn't nobody calling our phone. You know, his people came all the way to America, and I got my people on stage to, to, to be able to, to witness that. They came down here talking about other fighters. You know what I mean? They don't want this fight. Eddie Hearn is, you know, he having fun milking the cow, like I said. You know, one person, I heard one person made a comment and said, well, he can milk me. You know, well, I ain't in the business of being milk. I'm in the business of looking to see who, you know, I want to see who's the best. You know, it's good to make money and stuff like that, but how long are you going to cheat the people out of their money? How long are you going to be able to just sit around and just fight these, these guys that ain't even worthy of it? It's like I got to go through so much just to get a fight. They tell me I need to do this, I need to do that. But what do these other guys have to do? 
you know, I had to raise a profile. I had to, I, ha I have to, man, so y'all know, y'all ain't heard this stuff. But what about these other guys? What do these other guys have to do? Why is it only me? You know, people be expecting so much of me. I had to look good in the ring. I have to fight the best, and I have to knock them out. And I had to win all the rounds. That's the situation that I'm in. But, you know, I don't pay attention to people. I don't, I don't worry about what they say about me, but you will watch me work in that ring. Like I said, there's no man that is stood in front that have stood in front of me that I haven't knocked out, and I'm going to continue my knockout spree. Other people may look at me and think about and, and see other things on the outside, but these fighters know when they get in the ring, it's going to be a fight. Over here, Deontay. Dan Rayfield, <laughs> Dan Rayfield from ESPN. Congratulations. What's up, Dan? Uh, tremendous fight. But uh, my question for you is, you a lot of talk about Anthony Joshua. My question is, on March 31st, are you going to be ringside uh, in, in uh, Cardiff, Wales, to watch that fight? And if so, or even if you're not there, who do you want to win? Because maybe if Parker is the winner, maybe you'll have an easier time making a unification with him, since I know you want the belts necessarily, not necessarily of Joshua. Well, uh, unfortunately, um, Sky Sports definitely have hired me to come out and be a commentator, so I'm looking forward to uh, coming to Carter. I've never been to Carter before, so I'm looking forward to uh, making my, 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 my myself presence there and, um, and love all my fans. You know, I got a lot of fans in the UK. And as um, and far as who winning, it doesn't matter who wins. Of course, everybody wants to see Anthony Josh and, and Deontay Wilder, of course. And um, with Joseph Parker, I don't – I don't know. They say they want to fight, but they had the opportunity to fight me before. That's why they came to Alabama to the fight and stuff like that. But when I knock people out, people start to get indecisive of what they really want to do. You know, certain people say certain things for the media to entertain the crowd, to entertain the fans. But what I say, I really mean. Like I've said many a times before, I only say, I only speak from my heart. <laughs> you know, and my mouth is only the translator to what my heart is really saying. I have no filter. I'm going to bring it to you raw. I'm going to bring it to you uncut. You know what I'm saying? I know sometimes I say certain things that may make people feel uncomfortable, but I'm a real champion. I'm the realest champion in the business. You know, sometimes that may make up, mess up marketing or, or, or certain things that people are looking at you and stuff, but I'd rather be real with myself and to the people than being a fake person to, amongst the people just to get a little money out of their pocket. You know, my life is great. I got a beautiful family. I got beautiful children. I got a beautiful woman. You know, what more do you what more do I need? You know? Money ain't everything, you know. Two more questions. One more follow up for you, uh, Deontay. You both have our champions and have made uh, multiple defenses. Your biggest win obviously was tonight against Ortiz by knockout. His he's got the big win against Vladimir Klitschko that stands above all his other victories. Which do you think is the bigger win to the public? You knocking out King Kong or him knocking out a big name like Vladimir Klitschko? I think me knocking out King Kong. You know, King Kong is undefeated. <laughs> uh, Vladimir was, you know, he'd been beat many a times, and when he fought Joshua, he was already beaten. He wasn't a king. He was already dethroned. You know, we know that. He was coming out of almost a two-year layoff, you know, and really Joshua didn't win that fight. You know, uh, Vla um, uh, Vladimir lost. You know, he lost that fight. He had three opportunities to get that guy out of there. But, you know, he made the wrong decisions at the wrong time, and it cost him, you know. But if you're looking at a guy, you're looking at, you, you're looking at the same fighter maybe a year or two years ago that knew how to finish a fighter, then we wouldn't even be talking about this. You know, they still on their high horse about that win. But how can you really be on your high horse when somebody else already dethroned them, you know. And we already know who did that in, in Tyson Fury. So, you know, they can celebrate that for only for so long. And I feel that with, with, with Ortiz, he, he got the better skills. Um, he's definitely motivated to, to, to prove himself in this division. That's why it took him so long to get world title. Nobody wanted to fight this guy. Everybody ducked this guy. No, you know, you got promoters signing this man just to keep him away from fighters. Now, we see it. It's, it's just, I mean, enough of the bullshit. I'm sorry about the language, but it's just, I, like I said, I don't have a filter. I'm the realest, you know. Once I unify the division, they can have all their belts back. I just want to prove a point to myself and to the world that I am the best in the world. Final question. Huh? Final question. <laughs> Deont 
Deontay, Go I'm right here. I'm right here, brother. Deontay, congratulations on a heck of a, on winning a heck of a fight. Um, going with what happened in the seventh round, were there any concerns that the referee may stop the fight? And once you survived the seventh round, did you think you were winning the fight, or were you concerned that you were running out of time? No, I didn't think the ref was going to stop the fight. I mean, you when you got a contender and a champion, you let the fight continue. You know what I'm saying? You let you get people with the, you let people get their money worth. And I think the referee did a wonderful job that night. You know, I wasn't hurt. I was in a whirlwind. You know, I, I never thought Ortiz had power. I, I said that before. You know, he had me in that whirlwind. I was trying to get out of that tornado. You know what I mean? <laughs> and, I mean, he put a lot of punches, combination together well, you know. And it, I told Ortiz that he's never been in a, fi a fight with a fighter like me, so confident, you know, with a natural killer instinct, with a mindset like mine. You know, I control my mind, you know. I t you know, my mind is so strong. That's what meditation comes from. You know, it's a powerful exercise of exercising your mind. Like I said, I've been, I've fought him a hundred times through my, in my mind through meditations, you know, through meditation. So, you know, getting in that just proved, I, I'm glad I got into that situation because I showed people a lot that I can take a punch, that I can, you know, overcome adversity, you know, and now, what else, what else to be said? What you going to keep saying that I'm sloppy, or I'm windmilling, or whatever? What else you going to be said, man? At the end of the day, styles make fights, and uh, my style is what it is. I continue to prove to the people that I'm going to continue to win. I'm going to continue to knock these guys out with the style that I have. So people are just going to have to deal with what I got and just love on me as I love you guys and entertain you guys and give you some of the best fights. Like I said, I, I, I took a stand and um, took a, took a – uh, a great uh, risk with a small reward, just to show you guys that I am the best, you know, because I consider Lewis Ortiz the best. And uh, it was an honor to get in the ring with him, you know. Like I said before, I wanted to give him that second opportunity because he had a daughter with a disability as well as my daughter with a disability. And I know how that feels to have a, uh, as a father to have children that we love so much with a disability. So no matter what it was, I wanted to give him the opportunity so he can be able to support his family. Win, lose, or draw, man. You know, it was an amazing night. I respect him. I hope he still become prosperous in his career and still don't give up, no matter what the age is, because we'll probably never know. But, <laughs> <laughs> but I, I wish him the best, though. I really do. He's a great guy. And sometime in boxing, sometime in boxing, we have to transform into this killer. You know, as you can see, I, I, I'm a, you know, I, I don't know. It's just in boxing, when it's time to fight, I'm the bronze bummer. That's serious. Like, I, I don't care about nothing. I really try to hurt my guys. But then when it's over, I can love on my guys. I can show sportsmanship. You know, I can, I, can, I, can, I can hug them and kiss them and say, great job, man. I appreciate you, King. And go on to the next one. That's what this sport is all about. This is a beautiful sport. It'll never die. It'll be around for a long time, man, especially due to the support of you guys. Thank you guys for coming out. Thank you guys for supporting this card. It was a wonderful card, man. I think everybody got their money ready tonight. Thank you, guys. Bless you. Shelly Fingles, everyone. Um, what I want to address and try and put to bed once and for all is this Joshua fallacy. The fallacy is that Deontay, in some fashion, is avoiding Joshua. I have a letter here that is dated November 29th. It was the evening of the day that I met with Eddie Hearn's father, Barry Hearn. He said at the meeting, I think we could do bigger business in Las Vegas because I can bring over 20,000 Brits who will spend more money just like they did for Ricky Hatton. I said, fine, put the numbers together. We're ready to make a deal. I got a letter, and I'll quote it from Eddie. Glad you had a good chin wag with the old man. You know that came from him. That's not language we speak here. <laughs> I will get the respective P&Ls, profit and loss, to you this week for discussion, meaning what we would make in the UK, what we would make in Vegas. All the best, Eddie. That was November 29th. I have never heard from him since, okay? The bottom line is, if someone wants a fight, it gets made. We have not begun negotiation with him. 
We are fine to fight in the UK. We are fine to fight in Vegas. In one of the more recent interviews with Eddie Hearn, why did you take such a risky fight? That's our business. You want to fight who you fight, fine. You want to try and dodge Deontay so you could pick up another payday? The fact is, if it was another sport like football, you'd have a Super Bowl and the number one team would be there. If it was the World Series, if it was the NBA. Here you have one of the two best fighters in the world ready to fight. The dollars will get made if Joshua wants it. I know, no matter what is said, he doesn't want the fight now. Nothing to do with cowardice, nothing to do with anyone else. Deontay, he knows, is the only one who could beat him. He will fight when it's ready. Right now, he's dodging us. Thank you.